I know like 60% of y'all voted for a story time about the time I got scammed. However, that requires a ridiculously long script and making scripts when you have a hard time reading and writing is a hassle. So we're not gonna be doing that now. So while that video is in the making, I'm pretty sure you guys will wanna know how I'd make that video, which is exactly why I'm here to try and teach you with my very limited teaching ability. So amongst the rambling and complete incapability to read my own script, I hope this makes sense. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, before I even start drawing, I start prepping first. For me, prep is divided into two stages, brainstorming and thumbnailing. Brainstorming is basically getting a vague idea of what the animatic would look like just by listening to the song or audio you're using. Like, close your eyes and kind of feel out the audio that you're listening to uh, by that. I mean, try to visualize scenes that would go in your automatic just by listening to the song. Uh, let's use my cups automatic for, as an example. Listening to the song, I knew I wanted a new scene after every lyric so it would flow with the music and the beat a lot better. And in my other side automatic, I knew in this scene right here, I wanted Marshall to be his overdramatic self and start prancing around the place like he owns it. He kind of does, so. After I finish visualizing, I go to my sketchbook and I start drawing minuscule frames as a guideline for how the animatic would look like. And so I wouldn't forget what to draw because I'm a forgetful klutz. Don't bother making these frames look pretty like in the slightest. Just kind of doodle little stick figures and random shapes to get the basic idea down on paper to make animating down the line a lot easier. Here are some of my thumbnails as an example. They're not perfect in the slightest and literally only I can read them, but as long as it's readable to you, it shouldn't really be an issue how pretty they are. This is just a guideline to make sure that your ideas are fully down on paper so you can accurately translate them to your animatic. After you're done prepping, it's finally time to animate. Now this is the fun part. This is also just violence execution, so pick your points on how you're going to approach this stage. I just draw the frames and plug them into DaVinci and edit them. That's it. I usually uh, draw as many frames as I can in a day, and then I edit them in DaVinci as I'm done. Uh, by that, I mean it's, like, it's easier to spot mistakes when you edit the frames as you finish them. It, it makes the progress a lot easier. Also, if you give up halfway, you have something halfway, so that's something. <laughs> Uh, since this stage is pretty straightforward, I'm here to teach you a few tricks. Uh, just for clarification, I'm not an expert in the slightest if this audio doesn't prove that already. So, uh, yeah, don't expect much from me. So, um, basic rules to remember. If you want to show movement and energy through body movement, uh, do full or half bodies. But if you want to show emotions, show the face, for obvious reasons. Don't limit yourself to just face shots, because that would be um, ridiculously boring. And it would make your automatic just flat. Experiment with camera angles, perspective, uh, whatever works to make your automatic seem fun and appealing. If you're having problems with getting ideas, uh, I would suggest just going on YouTube and looking up animatics and see what other people have done. It's not a crime to take inspiration, I hope you guys know that. Just don't straight up copy and you're good. If you're drawing a crowd or a very detailed frame with like a detailed background or a cityscape or a big crowd or something, and you want, uh, let's say, this character to be the vocal point, make this character a higher opacity than the surroundings. That way, it's more visible. By lowering the opacity of the surrounding areas, it's harder to focus on them. Therefore, your eyes immediately look at the character with the higher opacity, which is this guy. Uh, lastly, and this is just my opinion, don't limit yourself to just black and white as your main colors. I know a lot of people on here who can make grayscale look really, really good, but I am sadly not one of those people. I also just personally feel less motivated to finish a project when there's little to no colors. So I would either go for a very 
pale pastel color as the background and a kind of darker navy for the lines and the actual drawings. Also, try to use different colors to convey different emotions. Like if it's sad, make the colors a bit darker. If it's happy, make it like brighter. If it's a combination of both, maybe try a gradient. Now for the actual animating tips. Let's start with this bounce effect. It's pretty straightforward. I'm pretty sure all of you know. But to those who don't, um, first of all, draw out your first and second frame. And as a kind of in-between, copy the first frame and kind of morph it. Uh, drag it down a few pixels, transform it, tilt it slightly, or just squish it. Whatever works, because it's only going to last for like 0.20, 10 seconds. Uh, set this frame after the first one and before the second to create a minimalistic bounce animation. This should make transition through movement a lot smoother. This also works for fast movement like this one where Marshall moves around Rion like he's a freaking fly. Uh, for this one, it's basically the same. Now, before the character moves, copy the frame and morph it to the opposite direction of where the character is going to go. Uh, this is for suspense reasons. Now, in the second frame where the character stops moving, you want to copy that and then morph it to the direction the character was moving. This gives off the feeling like they're halting in their tracks. Last thing to add is either a couple of lines or a smear frame. It's really up to you. If you want to make the frame pop out or kind of explode out, like, the, like this, I don't know what to call it, but uh, you literally just need to copy the frame, zoom in a few pixels, and set it for like 0.10 seconds. That, that, that's literally it. Now for moving foregrounds and backgrounds like these ones. Uh, for the foreground, in order for you to make the foreground move without interrupting with the background, you want to make a background of the same color of, as the paper layer behind the drawing, like this. That way the foreground doesn't overlap with the background awkwardly. I'm now going to teach you guys how I do my blink animations, and honestly, it's not that hard. Like, at all. All you have to do is remember this formula. Open, slightly less open, closed, slightly open, wider open, and normal open. I usually put a different closed version where the middle dips slightly lower than the first, but you don't have to do this. I usually do this to make the animation look more smooth and, well, bouncy. <laughs> For camera movements, you just have to play around with pans and zooms. I use the transform panel on DaVinci, and for iMovie, I think it's called Ken's Burns? Or Keyframes? I can't remember. It's, it's, it's either one of the both. Also, these are just basic rules I tend to follow. With half of the shots I animate, I just kind of experiment and wing it. The other side animatic I did, that whole entire thing was experimental. So basically, have fun with it. Animatics don't have to be pretty or perfect in the slightest, they're storyboards after all. And uh, don't worry about taking too long to finish them or stress yourself out about it too much. Take breaks and keep proceeding till you get that shit done. <laughs> it really depends how stubborn you are, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. This ending was not scripted, so I'm doing all this on the spot. Um, so thanks for watching. Thank you for getting me to 20k. We're close to 30k and I'm not ready. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed my very badly written tutorial. English has left the chat.